Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Paul, and in this Red to the Com video, we're going to be discussing and analysing tech news, which, as usual, has popped up over the past 24 or so hours. And we're going to start things out with the third generation of Threadripper, as yet more rumours are circulating around the internet that we will not see the third generation of Threadripper released. Indeed, there is an article from Forbes.com. I'll link the article, of course, in the description of this very video. And according to their sources and discussions with motherboard manufacturers, it may be that if you have an X399 motherboard, you will not necessarily have an upgrade path from the second generation of Threadripper. Now, to be clear here, the discussions with the motherboard manufacturers were not exactly fully transparent. So there's a couple of ways you could actually interpret it. The first of which is that X399 would then be followed up by a different platform. So, for example, the third or fourth generation Threadripper would be on a totally different platform, and X399 would stop right where it is. Another possibility, though, is that X399 is the end of the road, and AMD are a bit like, mm, well, is there much of a point in continuing Threadripper? According to a rather interesting article, I'll link that as well in the uh, video description, based upon John Petty research, around 2%-ish, give or take, of the desktop market is HEDT. So that would, of course, be Skylake X and Threadripper. But Threadripper has been in a really interesting position for AMD. Indeed, in my own coverage of Threadripper, because I've checked out the 2990WX, and I also uh, reviewed the 1950W as well, and, uh, sorry, uh, 1950X as well, and I do really like the processes. In multi-threading tasks, it's just, it's a beast. But I, and I'm probably going to get some uh, flack in the comments for this, for most users who just want, like, ease, I would actually still recommend Skylake X. Now, Skylake X does lose in some applications because it does have fewer cores. But I would argue that Threadripper, just because of the way that you have to disable cores and reboot, and with gaming content creation mode, and it's not ideal. And AMD have done a lot to improve this, and there have been updates and thread scheduling and so on, which have drastically improved performance. But I do feel that if there is a third generation of Threadripper, this is something that they do need to work on, and maybe why uh, X399 is not going to continue. Maybe that they need a different platform for that. Also, don't forget that it is using quad channel memory. Maybe AMD do not feel that quad channel is enough to feed uh, the next generation of Threadripper. No, I'm not really sure about that, because even if they go with 32 cores, 64 threads because of SMT. So there are several different possibilities. The first possibility is that AMD are just bringing the Threadripper chapter to a close. Don't forget that originally it wasn't even... It wasn't even envisioned by AMD. It was actually pioneered by a couple of folks at AMD, and it was kind of like a pet project until eventually it got green lit and then it turned into like a third set of products. Originally it was going to be just uh, Ryzen and of course Epic, along with, you know, various mobile parts to be clear. Uh, so there is the possibility that they're just bringing it to a close. 16 cores, 32 threads for AM4 is going to be what AMD focus on along with Epic. Another possibility is that we will see a third generation of Threadripper, and this is only going to be delayed until the first quarter of next year, which isn't necessarily a delay. After all, AMD did put it on their roadmap, but they didn't exactly officially uh, unveil a release date. In fact, one of the sources I was speaking to quite a while ago, they were actually one of the sources that gave me some of the Radeon 7 information, which... Uh, turned out to be true, along with some AM4 information for X570 chipset, such as the fact it was going to have PCIe 4.0, and once again, that turned out to be true. Uh, I was told that it was actually in development, but most likely it wouldn't be until the you know the late uh, Q4, so let's say November, December time, but that information is a little old now, so it's possible AMD could have scrapped those plans, or those plans have just been slightly delayed for whatever reason. Maybe they just don't have enough Zen 2 cores available. Maybe they feel like, huh, actually we kind of need to just make certain that we don't sell out of the Ryzen 3000 chips. We, we think that they're going to sell extremely well. Uh, and so they're kind of saving those uh, Zen 2 chips for that purpose and also for Epic as well, because... 
Well, obviously they want to really uh, eat into Intel's market share when it comes to the data center. Another possibility is Fred Ripper could see a delay for now. Um, you might remember I put out a video a couple of days ago, two, three days ago, I don't remember, like time just seems to have slipped away from me this week just because of a variety of different things. And the rumors have it, I'll try to remember to link it in the description of this very video, um, that Zen 3 would have up to four-way SMT. Now this is based on pure speculation on my part, based upon if those rumors are accurate. I want to be clear here, this is not from a source what I'm about to say. This is pure example and speculation. But one thing that AMD could do in theory is be like, okay, the second generation of Threadripper is going to hold on. We're going to phase it out. Third generation of Ryzen is going to happen. And then we're going to uh, move to Zen 3, four-way SMT. And from what I've heard, and I could cover this in uh, the previous video, the next generation Xbox is going to have up to four-way SMT, possibly three-way SMT. The mainstream platforms, which of course would be uh, AM4 based, that would be two-way SMT. Epic would be four-way SMT. And then what they could do, uh, so they don't eat into the Epic sales, but they also have a way to increase the core count. So for example, they could go with 32 cores, and then they could go with either three or four-way SMT for Threadripper. That's definitely one possibility. Obviously, SMT does not scale lin linearly, excuse me, with every new thread and it does heavily depend upon the application and so on and so on so it would be interesting to see exactly what happened there personally speaking i don't think amd are gonna scrap fred ripper i think that they might just delay it. that's my personal opinion i think that they're just going to delay it until next year but i'm interested to hear what your thoughts are on this very subject what do you think amd are going to be doing with the ripper of threads and while we're on the subject actually of amd news there's actually a leaked uh, set of motherboards from MSI that has popped up on the internet thanks to videocards.com. I'll quickly go over them in just a moment, but what is really interesting about both of these motherboards, it is, it is continuing the tradition of other higher-end uh, X570 motherboards that we've seen, and there is definitely much more robust cooling. It's active. There is actually a fan there. So let's have a quick look at the boards. Uh, I'm sure that others such as uh, Buildzoid will do a full analysis of this. So I'm going to go over it rather briefly because it's not exactly in the remit of this video to do like a full in-depth analysis of the PCB. So we'll start with the X570 Gaming Pro Carbon. As an aside, that's actually uh, the motherboard back here as well. It's actually the uh, Z390 Pro Carbon because I'm working on a project actually. Uh, well, actually a couple of projects, including a review of an AIO. But anyway, looking at the board itself, there appears to be in the top corner an 8 and 4 pin power connector, which, not surprising, AMD um, MSI boards typically do have that, the Pro Carbons. This board's got it as well. There's, there's the obligatory, I really can't speak today, uh, DDR4 boost as well as core boost technologies, which are just part and parcel of seemingly any high-end MSI motherboard, which is great. Uh, we can expect 64 gigabytes of DDR4 memory to be supported, but there is no mention here of the actual clock frequencies. We've heard that Ryzen uh, 3000 can support up to 5000 megahertz, but that's certainly not all boards, but we can expect this is probably going to be around, you know, the high 3000 mark to low 4000 mark, certainly. There are six SATA 3 ports, a couple of dual uh, USB 3 ports, we can see that there are a couple of two PCIe 4 slots uh, and also two PCIe uh, 4.0 slots. There's a couple of M2 slots. And furthermore, you can see MSI's steel armor is also in place. And a rather large, hefty heatsink at the bottom of the screen, uh, sorry, bottom of the image, which also has a rather large fan. It looks slightly larger than other boards that we've seen in terms of its fan. And there's also a Gaming Plus, which is a slightly lower skew. Um, this one appears to have a six-phase uh, VRM. Uh, it looks like it's slightly less robust than the uh, other one that we just saw, the Pro Carbon. And uh, it looks like we also have an eight and four pin power connector here. The uh, overall motherboard looks kind of nice, slightly, slightly uh 
less cool looking, at least in my opinion, compared to the Pro Carbon, but still looks kind of kind of nice in terms of its colour scheme anyway. Um, but yeah, it just looks like a slightly evolved version of the X470s, which isn't, you know, a bad thing or anything like that, but it does definitely look like uh, the rumours and the information that I've been told that uh, the power consumption of these motherboards and, you know, TDP and the VRMs are definitely going to be something that they need to take into consideration, as well as the chipset itself producing more heat. That's speculation, though, obviously, based upon rumours. Until we actually get the boards in for testing, uh, we can only just guess that that's true. I also reached out to one of my sources and asked what type of time frame we're going to be seeing Ryzen 3000 launch, and he remains adamant uh, for the time frame of July that we're going to see a uh, Ryzen 3000 launch, which does make sense based upon the mid-year uh, announcement from AMD and so on and so on. So if you're needing to save your pennies up for Ryzen 3000, you've got until July. Uh, one source has told me it's the 7th of July. Another source has told me it is July, but did not give me an exact time frame. So I'm still gonna like you know throw a dart at the july calendar date and uh, so if you need to save up money then well there you go the good news is though if you do happen to have let's say x470 motherboard then you're probably good to go i mean obviously you may miss out on certain features like pcie 4.0 depending on the board itself may be a bit spotty it will be interesting to see how clock frequencies and xfr and if there's any differences there kind of work but Certainly, if you are planning to get, let's just say, for the sake of argument, an 8-core processor because you just want the clock frequency and IPC gains, then I'm going to make a guess that an X470 or even an X370 or B450 or whatever motherboard are probably going to be just fine. Just make sure, though, before you sell your own processor, depending on the motherboard, some do allow you to update without... Um, without actually a CPU present, but just make sure that you do actually update the BIOS uh, before you do that, uh, just in case. Moving on to Intel, we actually have a leaked result of Tiger Lake, which is of a future architecture from the company, go into further details in just a moment. It is worth noting that this is only a two core part. Now it is being identified uh, in the benchmark as desktop, but from the clock speed and the fact it's only two cores, I would hesitate to guess that it is a desktop part. I'm going to probably assume it's being misidentified and it's a mobile part. But it is possible it's quite an early engineering sample and Intel is screwing around. Maybe they're, you know, just trying out a low-end configuration. So I'm going to be going forward under the assumption it is actually a mobile part. So the base clock is 1.5 gigahertz, 1.2 gigahertz for the boost frequency. Uh, it looks like it's going to be around 15 watts TDP. That's another reason I highly doubt it's going to be a desktop part. Uh, and Tiger Lake CPUs are actually scheduled to launch early next year. So that's 2020. And it will be the first architecture from Intel to leverage the 10nm process. Well, technically speaking, there have been 10nm CPUs before, but well, yeah, we all know the story of that, so I'm not going to uh, hit the. Uh, I'm not going to talk about that too much with the whole 10nm process. We all know the story for it. Uh, Tiger Lake, though, is going to be uh, rather interesting because it will apparently replace Ice Lake. And the rumours have it that it will actually be sporting an Intel XC graphics architecture and is based on Willow Cove, the CPU architecture, just to be clear here. Um, so, yeah, the benchmark itself isn't super duper useful because, well, yeah, it just doesn't really tell us super amounts of information. And so Soft Sandra is not the most accurate uh, to be honest with you, but it is still cool that we have the result and does tell us at least a little bit of information about it. In news that you probably wouldn't expect, although don't worry, we're probably not going to be getting a play box or an X station. I don't know. I couldn't think of a better example uh, anytime soon. Sony and Microsoft are actually partnering up and they're going to be doing so to explore and improve 
streaming technology as well as the use of cloud for artificial intelligence. This is a direct quote from the news portion of Microsoft's own website. They are calling this a strategic partnership and they have said that Sony and Microsoft are, have announced on Thursday that the two companies will partner on new innovations to enhance consumer experience in the direct-to-consumer entertainment platform and AI solutions. Under the Memorandum of Understanding signed by the parties, the two companies will explore joint development of future cloud solutions in a Microsoft Azure to support their respective game and content streaming services. In addition... The two companies will explore the use of current Microsoft Azure data center based solutions for Sony's game and content streaming services. By working together, the companies aim to deliver more enhanced entertainment experiences to the worldwide consumers. These efforts will also include building better development platforms for the content creator community. By integrating Sony's cutting-edge image sensors with Microsoft Azure AI technology in a hybrid manner across the cloud and edge, as well as solutions that leverage Sony's semiconductor and Microsoft's cloud technologies, the company aimed to provide enhanced capabilities by enterprise consumers. In terms of AI, the parties will explore incorporation of Microsoft advanced AI platform and tools in consume Sony's consumer products to provide highly intuitive and user-friendly AI experiences. For my own research with the PlayStation 5, Sony are definitely pushing artificial intelligence on the console and it would appear that we will see advanced uh, AI capabilities on the system built directly onto the GPU. I'll try to remember to link it in the video description. Either way, Sony and Microsoft partnering is definitely a great thing for both companies. It's going to be interesting how developers respond to this and what tools it actually provides developers. The fact it's also using Azure is definitely not a bad thing for Microsoft. And it's going to be interesting to see the actual platforms themselves in terms of like the hardware and what is actually being used under the hood uh, for both systems. Also, given the PlayStation 5 and the next generation Xbox are likely, give or take, going to be fairly similar in their underlying technologies, this is probably going to just be a bonus for both companies. And honestly, it, if it helps to really kickstart uh, and improve artificial intelligence in games and so on and so on, in my opinion, this is only going to be a win for us as gamers. With all of that said, though, hopefully you have enjoyed the video. Normal stuff if you did, like, share. You can subscribe as well as comment down below what do you think uh, you would like AMD to do with the Threadripper platform, if nothing else. And you can also find us on the social and medias, which once again is linked in the description of this very video. You can also find us on Patreon, uh, which you can donate to if you so desire, as well as some Amazon affiliate links. But I'm going to let you all go. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.